If you are an architecture student, an architecture fanatic, I created this video series to go over architecture terminologies on Tuesdays just to help explain the world and lingo that is present in the architecture world. Today, we are going to be talking about temples, their components, organization, especially in antiquity. I will only be really focusing on ancient Greek temples today. It's your girl Nat here. For those of you who don't know, I'm a current master's student at University of Pennsylvania. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It means the world to me. And also consider supporting my Patreon to help me pay for grad school. So as I mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna be talking about temples. And by definition, a temple is building reserved for religious or spiritual rituals and prayer. Common building typologies include churches, mosques, and synagogues. But as I stated in the intro, just for time sake, this video is only going to be focusing on ancient Greek temples. In ancient Greece, the most important building typology is a temple. Stone temples were constructed around the early 6th century BCE. Their purpose was to house a cult statue, as their religion did not require masses of people to gather inside a temple to worship. Inside their temple were monuments to the gods. A good example of a Greek temple for you to look at is called the Temple of Hepacitus. There is a 99% chance that I mispronounced that, but that's how you spell it. It's located near the Acropolis and is the best preserved Greek temple in the world. It was built around 450 BCE and is a classic example of Dorian architecture, designed by Ictinus, who also was the architect of the Parthenon. Another example is the Valley of Temples. It was built in 5th century BCE and is the largest, best preserved Doric style temple. Other temples in the valley include the Temple of Juno, Temple of Hercules. The Parthenon is also an example of a ancient Greek temple. It is probably the most well-known ancient architecture form of all kind. The Parthenon itself sits on top of the Acropolis and is the most popular tourist attraction in Greece. The construction of the Parthenon began in 447 BCE and the purpose of the Parthenon was to house a massive statue of Athena made from ivory, silver, and gold. It was unfortunately stolen and later destroyed I think by Constantine. So what are the components of a temple? Here are the basics. Temples are oblong in shape with pillars running along the front and sides and a triangulated roof. Typically, temples were built on high ground and the temple itself was normally situated within a larger temenos or sanctuary. Greek temples are often categorized in terms of their ground plan and the way in which the columns are arranged. A pro-style temple is a temple that has columns only in the front, while an ampri-pro-style temple has columns in the front and in the rear. Temples with a, with a peripteral arrangement has a single line of columns arranged all around the exterior of the temple building. Diptrial temples simply have a double row of columns surrounding the building. And lastly, one of the most unusual plans is a tholos, a temple with a circular ground plan. Famous examples of this would be the sanctuary of Apollo in Delphi. The ancient Greek architects took a philosophical approach to architecture rules and proportions. Fun fact, optical tricks were actually employed at these ancient Greek temple sites, such as thickening, lowering parts of the column, or even having the column lean inwards so that from a distance, the temple appears perfectly straight and in harmony. These buildings were heavily symbolic and were mathematically perfect. Even some Greek temples appeared to be oriented astronomically. So needless to say, a lot of thought went behind the placement and the plan of these temples. Most Greek temples follow a remarkably similar plan. Almost all temples are rectangular. The exterior sides consist of rows of columns with a cella in the center. And the cella is the main chamber of a Greek or Roman temple built to house said cult statue. The cella generally had a porch or pronanos before it and perhaps a second chamber or an antineos serving as a treasury for trophies and gifts. 
The roof was usually raised along a central ridge with a slope of approximately 15 degrees and was constructed from wooden beams and rafters covered in overlapping terracotta or marble tiles. The widest span of a temple roof was typically across the cella. Finally, the doors to the temples were made of wood, like elm, and often decorated with bronze medallions. The earliest temple, built to enshrine statues of deities, were probably of wooden construction. These wooden temples were later just replaced with more durable stone temples, and these stone temples still exist today, and you can go visit them. Most times, the sculpted elements in the pediments and friezes told some sort of history and mythological story. Also, the Greeks had an excellent understanding of building foundations and dewatering sites. This alone allowed these ancient structures to survive vicious weather changes and earthquakes over the century. Every temple rested on a masonry base called a crypidoma, generally of three steps, of which the upper one carried the columns. Stoas, which were long, narrow rows of columns and roofed, were also a common feature in temples. And the last thing I wanted to draw attention to was the propylon or porch. It formed a f entrance to the temple sanctuary and other significant sites. A good example of this is the Propylaea in the Acropolis of Athens. So that is a brief introduction on Greek temples and their components, organizations, things, and once again, just because temples is a really, really vast topic, if you guys want to see more analysis on like Roman temples or other ones from antiquity, I'm uh, comfortable doing that. Churches, mosques, um, synagogues, they're all very complex, even the way Korb designed his churches, super complex. And it's just, it's too much information just to all slam together in one video. So that's why I only focus on the Greek. So if you learned something new, please hit a thumbs up. All my sources are going to be linked down below. Please check them out and do your own research and only use credible sources. That means no Wikipedia. Consider donating to my Patreon. And I hope to see you in the next video. Love you guys.